earlier also, Second Peter 3 and verse 18. Um, uh, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and for ever. Amen. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So this is something that never stops, this kind of growing. It's uh, it's there for, I guess, all eternity, but definitely on you know, on this side of eternity, you know, this exhortation for the church that comes from Peter, you know, grow in the grace of God. So grow in the gifts, grow in the 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 favor, the unmerited favor, grow in the um, the divine virtue, character, and the the empowerment um, that grace talks all that grace is, and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So grow in uh, understanding of the Lord, grow in the knowledge of God, uh, grow in the experiential knowledge of God, right? Um, not just, uh, you, know, you know, you you get to know him. And, and we know the, the great Greek word that is used there is gnosis, which means that, uh, you know, uh, knowledge or information. And uh, uh, it is, um, you know, uh, it's it's knowledge by experience, right? So, so grow in that, um, which is our ex exhortation, right? So, so let's pray towards that. Let's pray and ask the Lord, Lord, um, you, know, um, you know, if you if you feel that okay at any point that you feel, you know, um, limited or feel that you've reached a place a plateau and feel that you need to go grow further or grow further, right? You just ask the Lord, Lord. Um, whatever is a blocker, whatever is uh, some a barrier, a hindrance, uh, let it be taken away, let it be moved away. Um, whatever is maybe something, the posture of my heart or something that is hindering, uh, let it be taken away and let me grow in the grace, let me grow in the knowledge, right? So it's, let's pray. Father, we, we thank you, Lord, that this is your desire for us, each of us, God, that we continuously grow because there is so much more, oh God, to who you are, uh, and Lord, uh, uh, you are infinite, and so God, the learning is limitless, God, understanding is limitless, God, and this is your desire that that we grow, that we grow in the grace, and we grow in the knowledge of you, and Lord, we thank you that uh, our spirit is capable of receiving that because you have created us in your own image, God. So, God, we uh, today we, we just come and we just ask you in all humility, God, that you will, whatever is there as a hindrance, Lord, uh, give us the wisdom to put it aside. Give us the give us the understanding to just cast it away, God. Anything that's a barrier, let it be broken down in the mighty name of Jesus. If there's a barrier uh, emotionally, let it be um, let it be just taken away in the name of Jesus. If there is a, a wrong understanding, uh, uh, something that is limiting, uh, uh, maybe something like a shame or condemnation, let it be taken away in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for the liberty that we have in the spirit, each one of us, God. Thank you that you, God, um, where your spirit is, there is freedom, Lord. And uh, we thank you that you've called us to this freedom, Lord. And I just pray, Father God, that each one of us will just thrive in this freedom, O oh God. And Lord, even as we are rooted, Lord, uh, in you, Master, that we will just draw from you, O oh God, and we will bear fruits worthy of, uh, Lord, accepting, accepting, O oh God, and uh, bear fruits, O oh God, that glorify you, God. Yes, Master, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. And I just pray for each one here. And I pray that each one of us, God, will, will continue to grow, continue to come to maturity, Lord, and, uh, and, and reflect your glory, Lord, reflect your character in and through our lives, Lord. And uh, I ask, oh God, let the river flow, let the river of the Spirit of God flow um, through us. Lord, yes, Lord, as a mighty river, God, uh, flowing through us, Lord, touching other lives, Lord. Yes, Father God, we thank you. Uh, and to this end, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, hey, welcome back, those, all those who joined us uh, just now. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, we couldn't meet last class. I 
uh, had to you know kind of uh, reschedule it um, or post i mean cancel that class um, anyway today um, we are continuing to look at um, the principles that we are, we looked at the principles that god has put in his word or our, the principles that god has already placed for uh, divinely enabled success okay what are these principles that i can look at what is that that already god has you know kind of set in place in his word that that i can learn and that i can uh, and i can start to implement that in in my own life right and so what are those things so we looked at that so we see we uh, we looked at i think two uh, one is to put god first right and the lord jesus saying seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and he's talking about all the other things that will be added to you right and uh, we looked at uh, other verses also and second thing that we saw was that we need to be doing what god wants us to be doing okay in the sense god has perfect knowledge perfect understanding of uh, of of people place circumstances timing everything so when god leads us to do certain things or even he gives us the strategy when he gives us a plan when he gives us when he says okay you go here and do this now it is with the understanding that it will result it will have divinely enabled consequences right? divinely uh, when when the when divinely inspired methods come to us and you know that it will have divinely enabled consequences right so uh, the results will be um, will be one one of success and growth and in the plan and the purpose of god right so so for us to really joyfully and uh, um and wholeheartedly pursue that what god wants us to be doing so that was the second time second thing that we saw okay so today uh, let's uh, let's continue with you know the other principles that god has put in uh, as kept for us in his word okay so we're going to look at let me just share the screen um so we're going to look at uh, the third one which is to practice righteousness okay to practice righteousness to do what's right in god's eyes which is in na- in line with his nature which is righteousness right so uh, every time we i mean generally when we do the right thing right we are reflecting the nature of god okay we are in fact doing or uh, we are stepping in and doing what god would do being right okay doing the right thing okay so when we say righteousness we're talking about the very nature of god which is the opposite of sin or unrighteousness okay? so for us to practice righteousness make it part of our life to live in this manner is to position our lives for um for the for the will of god to happen right which is good which is right which is beneficial for us as uh, as believers right so um so we going to, going to the scripture that we have seen many times uh, that we have read many times which is psalm 1 okay psalm 1 uh, and verses 1 to 4 it says it talks about the person who's happy or blessed okay bless is the man and it talks about who walks not who stands not who sits not okay walking standing uh, and who does not sit uh, talking about different postures talking about you know basically it's talking about a person who does not do these things who does not consider who does not follow um who who's Uh, what what does he not consider was what does he not follow what does he not you know act in line with well it's the counsel of the ungodly right a counsel of the ungodly meaning uh, an un, you know it's coming from an ungodly source it it will result in an ungodly consequence you know it will have a ungodly fruit now that is what we're talking about right who does not walk in the counsel does not stand in the path of sinners meaning hey, this is the lifestyle of a person who 
you know, maybe rebelling against God, you know, all ignorance, we, we don't know, you know, whatever, you know, knowingly or unknowingly, who does not know God. Now, that's the lifestyle, you know, it's a path of sinner, okay, a series of steps that person takes over and over again. This is his life, his or her life. So, who stands not in the path, right, who does not consider, who does not walk that path, um, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, okay. Uh, like he's not sitting to consider, he's not, um, you know, sitting with and making decisions and uh, about uh, uh, in that environment of people who are scornful, who are laughing, looking down at others and maybe God, God's values, you know, all that. Right? Sits not in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. Okay, so that's the beautiful thing that uh, he does not do this, all these other things. He does not consider, he does not walk in, he does not even weigh the, uh, the, the, the principles and the, and the counsel of the ungodly. But, but his delight, okay, um, and that word there, Hebrew word there, which means that his pleasure, his desire, and uh, he, something that he considers to be very valuable, pleasant, Right. His delight is in the law of the Lord. Okay, so so that's uh, that's such a person. He's he's delighting in the law of the Lord, and he meditates day and night. Okay, so so he's uh, so this person is not considering unrighteousness, is not uh, you know giving it any importance. Um, it does not even kind of rationalize, justify, you know, he's not struggling with that. He's just, his del because his delight, his great desire, what gives him, you know, what gives him desire, what gives him pleasure even, is the law of the Lord. And, and he meditates in it. He's thinking deeply. He's, his mind is occupied with the law of the Lord. So we see that law of the Lord is good. The word of God is pure, it's righteous, it's holy. Right? So that is what occupies his mind. That is what occupies his heart. So he is giving it great thought. He's giving it great value. He's esteeming it. And so what comes in his action and maybe his, you know, all that we thought of, all that we looked at, you know, the, the counsel, the path, his lifestyle, and, and whatever he gives importance to make the decisions, right? This, the, what the seat talks about, you know. Um, so all that flows out of his or her involvement, you know, deep thought, deep thinking, and thinking over and over again uh, about the, the truth of God's word. Now, that is what occupies the thinking, the imagination, and therefore the speech and the action and everything follows through. Okay, so he's he or she is just living that life. Okay. And verse three talks about the consequence. Okay. So verse one talked about what the person does not do. Verse two talks about what the person does. Verse three talks about the outcome of that says he shall be or she shall be like a tree okay and like a tree that's planted by rivers of water so there is source this continuous supply and uh, it brings forth its fruit in season so there is a uh, you know the the productivity whatever needs to be produced out of you know, a life, you know, because you're putting in effort, you're putting in labor, and you're doing certain things. So there is an outcome, a productive outcome, a good outcome, you know, fruit in its season, a timely outcome, right? And um, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. So there's no question of, uh, uh, you know, there's no question of um, things being ineffective, or things coming down to a place of failure because the source, the supply, and everything what they're continually drawing from is is different. It's a different source. It's a it's a righteous source. Right? It's it's the word of God uh, and the presence of God, the principles of God. Right. So so you, that's the kind of outcome that God intends for a person 
who does not consider all these things, who considers deeply the word, the law, meditates on it, thinks deeply about it day and night. Right? So it's not a, it's a continuous thing. It's not just a one-time thing. It's not a weekly once kind of a thing. It's not a Sunday thing. And the outcome is this. Right? So, so God, in, we, we, you know, we've been looking at, okay, God's heart for, for his people to prosper, to, um, you know, it's all good things. Um, and even in what seems to be, you know, an outcome of bad choices, he reverses it. He turns around it because he's a redeemer, right? That's his heart. So we see this is the end for those who practice righteousness. So this is a principle which is there. So um, many times we hold back from practicing righteousness because um, it seems so long drawn. You know, there seems to be a shortcut which, which seems to give immediate results. Well, it might not be the right thing to do, but it it's definitely you know, seems to save on time. It seems to benefit me, uh, you know, in in the in the short term, right? And um, and maybe you know it'll just stay, right? So we we many times we we opt for that, right? We say, okay, this is seems good. Uh, it's it doesn't seem to be that unrighteous. You know, we have our own scale, uh, our own evaluation measure. So it doesn't seem to be that bad. It seems okay. Uh, uh, well, we compare and say, okay, that person does it, that pastor does it, or that believer does it. So maybe it's not so bad after all. You know, maybe I can also get into it. But uh, but this is the principle that God has for us. Okay, so many times, even though it seems like an attractive option, uh, what God intends for us, desires for us, is to is to go by His word. Is, is to go by his leading and because this is the end that he intends for us it's long term okay, it's not a short term thing it's long term it says talking about fruit in its season and we know that there is a, you know there, it takes time to bear fruit right um, and uh, it's it's drawing it's an ever ending supply it's drawing from the rivers um, and rivers of water and says okay this is what the end that i intend so um so there here's a principle practice righteousness right okay so the same thing we see in psalm 112 as well okay psalm 112 uh, maybe a few verses let's read that let's read through okay praise the lord blessed is the man who fears the lord who greatly sorry who delights greatly in his commandments his descendants will be mighty on earth the generation of the upright will be blessed wealth and riches will be in his house and his righteousness endures forever um, unto the upright there arises light in the darkness he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous a good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. He has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor and then verse 10 talks about what will happen to the wicked and so on the wicked will see it and be grieved and and yeah so the thing is this you know again uh, blessed is the man who fears the lord who delights greatly in his commandments and it's um, uh, and it talks about the descendants um, the next generation and the present generation it talks about um, so relationally it talks about materially right and uh, and and so much more right uh, and also talks about the um excuse me uh, and talks about the generosity of such a person and he's dealing graciously he's lends he gives and um, uh, he says that you know he's not afraid of evil things evil tidings his heart is steadfast trusting in the lord now the, our heart being 
steadfast trusting the Lord comes from a place of delighting in the Lord and delighting in His commandments in His ways. Right? So it's it, it's wonderful. So this is uh, this is something that is promised by God. Right. So every time we are tempted to compromise, right, um, tempted to do maybe bend here a little, bend that a little, and compromise, um, we can remind ourselves, you know, this is what, this is the end that is intended by God. This is what God wants for a person who delights in him, delights in his ways. Um, uh, another verse, Psalm 92 and verse 12, right? The righteous shall flourish. The righteous shall flourish. Like a palm tree, he shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And, you know, it goes, talks about how those who are planted in the house of the Lord um, shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. So the righteous shall flourish one who one the righteous of course talks about the ones who have a right standing with god the one who live uh, in righteousness doing the right thing and how do we know what is the right thing or what is our reference point it is the word of god right it is uh, the precepts the principles and the presence of god being led by the spirit of god so that's our reference point to for what is right, right? so the righteous shall flourish okay so um, we've, we've heard okay many will be the afflictions of the righteous or a righteous man will fall down but we see that even in that there is a turning around right? though he fall the lord will lift him up okay um, the lord will raise him up okay so so here are some things for us to consider when it comes to you know prosperity, when it comes to um, for thriving, when it comes to success and increase, practicing righteousness. Right? Um, yes, it is challenging because you know it's good to talk about it in class. It's good to talk about it uh, in church, but in the world when we come to those circumstances and situations where we need to take a stand and act righteously, um, that is where, you know, we, we need the strength of God. And that is where we need to tell ourselves, we need to make a decision, even before we come to that place, just like Daniel did, right? Daniel said, okay, he purposed in his heart that we will not divide the food. He, even before he came to that sun post, he, even as he, before he came to that crossroad, he purposed in his heart. So, so also, you know, today as we are looking at it, you know, looking at God for us, this is the principle that he has in his word. So, so we can think about it and say, okay, God, whatever the consequence, we know that you have good uh, in your in, intended for us. You know, your intention is good. You want the best for us. And so, God, you know, I will do the right thing. Like no matter what, I will do the right thing. So, you know, um, that is a decision that we can make. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the thing is, diligent work. Okay, so God did not exclude work in this whole process of giving us success and growth. Right. So it's not an unspiritual thing to to work and expect good results. Right? Sometimes when we come to the, you know, when we come to faith in God and say, we, we, sometimes we think that, okay, to be a person of faith means that, um, well, I don't need to do these things. Right? Or maybe we have an understanding, wrong understanding that, well, um, since grace of God is free, then, you know, these things must happen if I, you know, when it's grace, then these it's opposite of work. So, you know, why should I work? Why should I put in effort? I don't want to strive. Right? Uh, we have that kind of a mentality. But we, but we see that, you know, when Paul talks about 
the grace that was given to him. See, he received the grace of God, the favor of God, the enablement of God, and he uh, that did not spare him, or he did not hold back from putting in the effort. Right? What was what was required you know, in his travel and his ministering, and he talks about so many things in Second Corinthians, like you know. He, went there he endured these things and uh he uh, he did it for the sake of the gospel um, i think when we look at second corinthians uh, chapter 11 right uh, maybe from verse 22 onwards he talks about a whole lot of things that he went through uh for the sake of the gospel now that talks about you know his decision his desire to uh, to just go ahead and do do certain things right to minister so, um, so we see that uh, well, God gives us grace, but He expects us. This grace should energize us, right? The anointing of God, the Spirit of God upon us, uh, should really you know, inspire us, and and He does that, right? He just moves in us, uh, moves upon us, so that we move, you know, in line with this, uh, uh, with His leading to do the works. To do the works right? that's the complete picture right um, and we know that faith without works you know is dead right? so work when you look at it we see that god intends for us to you know, to work and he blesses our work okay okay so let's look at um uh let's look at second chronicles okay 31 Thirty-one, twenty-one, and every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law, and in the commandment to seek his God, he did it with all his heart. Okay, he's talking about. Uh, uh, I think it's talking about Hezekiah, right? Yeah. So, um, so he brings in many reforms and everything, and, and this is how it summed up. Okay, in every work that he began in the service of the house of God, in the law and in the commandment to seek his God. He did it with all his heart, so he prospered. Okay. Um, wholehearted, without holding back, he did it. And so he prospered. And, um, you know, a couple of other scriptures which talk about what kind of an outlook that we should have when it comes to work, when it comes to doing things. Right. That um, uh, we've seen in Colossians uh, chapter three, <clears throat> Colossians three verse seventeen, whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father through Him. Okay, so that's that's the outlook, that's the perspective. Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, word deed, everything. Verse 23, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. Okay, And, uh, um, you know, Colossians 3.22 talks about um, not doing things just mere eye service. Okay, Mere eye service means if I, if people are watching me, then I put in a certain quality of work but if people are not watching me or if there is no overseer if there are no you know uh, nobody telling me oh do this do that then I put in a different quality of work like a different effort which is far less than what is expected right that's what it, bond servants obey the, in all things your masters according to the flesh not with eye service as men please us so with eye service meaning Okay, as long as people are watching, I'm doing it, and I just want to pl please that person. Okay, but it says here, but in sincere, don't do that, but in sincerity of heart, fearing God. Sincerity of heart, fearing God. So God is never against work, and this is what he wants us to do. You know, every Everything that we put our hands to, uh, he's saying, okay, God is my ultimate boss right? I might have earthly um, bosses and uh, people
people are there over, overseeing the work, but uh, I'm going to look beyond that and I'm going to do something that is, uh, this work is as unto the Lord. Okay. And uh, so we see the, you know, the, the, uh, again, the end result of it. You know, he, um, he did it. Ezekiah did it. He did it with all his heart. And so he prospered. Okay. So uh, when we work diligently, when we do things uh, diligently, there is always, um, uh, you know, um, fruitfulness in all labor. Okay, I think Proverbs 10 and verse 4. Uh, he who has a slack hand becomes poor, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Okay. Chapter 11 and verse um, 16. Um, okay, so, uh, sorry, chapter 11, verse 16 talks about a gracious woman retains honor and the ruthless man uh, retains riches. Um, I'm sorry, I think uh, I, I just missed out that um, reference. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, sorry, verse 18, if you go down, the wicked man does deceptive work. Uh, sorry, that's verse 18, right? Proverbs 11, verse 18. The wicked man does deceptive work, but he who sows righteousness will have a sure reward as righteousness leads to life. So he who pursues evil pursues it to his own death okay so like contrasting righteousness and unrighteousness and um, and deceptive work and um, doing works of righteousness so um, so this is what we you know god has laid out he has uh, put it as a principle as a precept right and he um, and this is something that is there so when we ignore these principles and uh, and when we suffer the consequence, you know, we, we cannot blame God, right? So God has already placed it and he's saying, you know, my children, you know, my sons, my daughters, I, I want you to pursue this. Let this be part of your life. Right? You do this and I my desire is that you that you enjoy or you receive the end result of it. Okay, that's God's desire right so diligent work okay so then uh the third thing uh for today i mean this fifth point really is to have faith in god to use the principles of faith right to have faith in him to have trust in him and use the principles of faith okay so let's look at um, a few scriptures here you know uh, matthew 9 and verse 29 Um, so the Lord Jesus, uh, this is when uh, when he heals the blind uh, blind men. Okay, so uh, let's read uh, from verse twenty eight onwards. Right, and when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, "Do you believe that I am able to do this?" So they said to him, "Yes, Lord." Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your faith, let it be to you. Uh, and their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, see that no one knows it. Okay. So um, here's something uh, that God is, um, you know, the Lord is asking them, you know, do you believe? Okay. Do you believe? What is it that he's asking them, you know, uh, uh, if they will believe in, you know, if they believe in his ability? Okay. If they believe in his supernatural ability to cause things to change in their body, okay, and the same would um, you know would apply uh, even in situations regarding maybe finances, maybe some um, some areas of lack, maybe um, areas of um, you know continued failure. So the Lord would ask that question, you know, do you believe and I'm able to do this? You know, do you believe that I'm able to, you know, bring about a change? Do you believe that I'm able to turn around the situation? Do you believe that I'm able to lift you up and prosper you and bring you good success? Do you believe that? Right. So, so this, you know, if you look at this, you see that, um, um, there is no question about the willingness of the Lord. Okay. 
there is no there is no question about the willingness of god he's not asking you know do you believe or do you know that it is my will you know do you believe that i'm willing to do this um do you believe that it is my my will for you no, he doesn't ask that he is just asking them do you believe in my ability to do that right so with the the will of god or the willingness of god to come and change um that situation is it's a given right he is saying that i'm i am willing right and and in another place also um when when the, when the blind uh, so when the father asked the uh, asked the lord jesus he comes to him on behalf of his uh, uh, son and he, and he asks you know lord um um let my oh that that my son will be made well and and the lord asks you know um, do you believe uh, if you are willing he says you know if you are willing lord um i think it's in verse 8 sorry this is the um, it's about the leper sorry uh, is in chapter 8 sorry chapter 8 and the leper came and worshiped him saying lord if you are willing you can make me clean right and the lord put out his hand put out uh, his hand and touched him saying i am willing be cleansed okay so so here was this question uh, about the willingness of god and and you say you know i uh, if you read through the gospels you see that the lord saying i will come i will heal you know, uh, the same chapter chapter 8 and verse 7 the lord jesus said to him i will which means that uh, you know this is my decision this is my this is my choice you know i will come and heal him um so so here you know again coming back to um chapter 9 verse 28 we see that the lord are asking you know do you believe that i'm able so so the faith of that of those two men uh, is the response the faith response is yes lord and we believe that that you are able okay so uh, when they extended their faith And then the lord's response uh to their uh, you know faithful response is that according to your faith let it be to you right so the lord again this is what he has put in the scripture you know as a principle you know, according to your faith let it be to you so when we reach out to him in faith when we uh, have faith in his ability to turn around the situation when we have in faith in his, his ability to come through in in circumstances then the lord says you know according to your faith so many times what hinders our faith in god is our maybe wrong understanding or even our ignorance about the will of god right so sometimes we we i'm sure you you learned in faith class that uh i we hold back saying okay what if it's not the will of god right then we need to find out what is the will of god what is the heart of god right his word is his will so the word we look at the word uh we we come to know about his will his ways are the will of god and his heart you know his nature his character uh, again points to uh, his his will right so when we know the will of god then we can be absolutely sure we can just stand on faith and say god this is your heart and therefore you know i'm i'm standing wholeheartedly in faith god yes i believe and we can respond in different ways you know we can say okay god i'm fearful god help my unbelief right um build my faith god and god gives us the resources to build this build faith in us right the word of god brings faith meditating uh, declaring we're going to look at declaring god's faith uh, god's word next so meditating on the word of god you know standing in the word of god uh, speaking the word of god uh, brings faith or praying in the spirit like we see in um, um is it 3 john 2 or is it in jude um um just give me a minute yeah uh, jude uh verse 20 right chapter 1 verse 20 right building up 
in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. So we know that praying in the Spirit brings edification, right? So when we um, when we in faith, when we when we ask Him in faith, when we declare in faith, right? We we see the end that is again intended by God. Okay? Um, let's look at a couple of other verses as well. Um, Okay, so um, Psalm 75, verse 6, uh, exaltation comes neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south, but God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. And so God exalts, God brings down, God exalts, and exaltation comes uh, from, from him. Okay, so when we have faith in the one who exalts, when we have faith in him, and we when, when we are you know, doing the things that you know, walking in righteousness, etc. And but, but having faith in Him, having faith in His ability to exalt, having faith in His ability to lift us up, right? Um, that uh, he, this is who He is. Okay. Um, and let's look at the other words also. Second Chronicles twenty. Okay. Um. um so. Uh, about um, King Jehoshaphat, and, and here it is. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. So he's talking about, you know, believing in the Lord, faith in what God does, um, and who he is, believing in his word, uh, when he says believe his prophets, it's the prophetic ministry, is the now word of God, which a true prophet would bring. Right? So believing in that, so basically it's his word, it's his ways, and uh, it's who he is, uh, and in the prophetic words that, that God brings to us, and the end result is that you shall prosper. Okay, it shall be well with you. You shall prosper. Okay, so um, so we see this that um, it involves belief. It involves believing. It involves having faith. Okay. Um, so closely tied to that is the next one, which is to speak God's word of prosperity over our lives. Okay, so it comes from a heart of believing. Okay, the speaking. Is not a, it's not a formula, right? It's not repeating over and over again till it becomes a reality. Okay, it comes from a place of belief. It, the 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 foundation is uh, the relationship, the intimacy with Jesus. Okay, so when you when you when you when you take that out. Then there is an abuse of, you know, speaking the word. It becomes like a name it and claim it and and all those things. And well, there has been abuse of it, right? Um, in the church, and people have been hurt by it, and people have been deceived by it, and uh, and all kinds of things. But we see that it's a very important principle uh, that that has been laid out, and it's it's got its root in intimacy with the Lord. It's, it's got a root in intimacy. It's got its foundation in relationship. So it's not some mindless chant. It's not some mantra that you know you chant it over and over again. But it comes from a place of uh, uh, of relationship with the Lord. It comes from a place of intimacy, and that is what births faith, right? Intimacy with the Lord. Coming to, uh, you know, coming coming to that close association with his heart and with his nature and ways and and esteeming his word and receiving his word talks about intimacy, and that's what produces faith. And from that place of faith, when we speak the word, when we speak God intended purposes, right? We're not speaking assumptions. We're not declaring uh, this 
you know, something presumptuous. But we are declaring God intended plans and purposes in various situations, right? Over family, over our own lives. Then that is a principle that God has laid out. You know, you look at, um, let's say, um, Mark 11 and verse 23, right? It says, um, it was 22 onwards, Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, but he starts by prefacing it by saying, have faith in God, right? Uh, and whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Right, so he's having faith in God, he, faith which comes from a from from you know acknowledging His word, esteeming His word, faith which comes from um, you know all the other things that we see, right? Walking with Him and receiving His word and receiving uh, you know knowing and understanding His heart and will and purpose, everything. It says when you speak to the mountain, and when you don't doubt, and when you believe, that's those things. That you say will be done, you will have it. Okay. So this is also another principle that God has laid down. Um, so we have many such, uh, we have many such scripture right? in the instruction which God gives Joshua after Moses is not there. I mean, Moses is dead, and so gives Joshua. What does he say? You know, this book of law shall not depart from your mouth. So you're saying, telling Joshua, you know, don't fear, be bold, be courageous. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, you know, but um, which means that you speak it, Joshua, speak it over your life. Speak those things that I've you know, laid down. This book of law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it. Think about it and you shall be careful to observe all that is written in it. And then you will have a prosperous it will make your way prosperous and you will have good success you see again the heart of god okay this is what i want for you i want you to do this okay. these things that i've laid down and it involves speaking words of faith coming from a place again i want to say you know it coming from a place of relationship coming from a place of place of intimacy and faith in god okay. uh, one last verse is proverbs 18 and verses um you know, 20 and 21, a man's stomach shall be filled, shall be, shall be satisfied with the, from the fruit of his mouth, from the produce of his lips, he shall be filled. Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay, Death and life. Look at that. Extreme things, right? Death, life. Tied to something which is common, which is the power of the tongue. Okay, Which means it can go either way based on what we, how we use it, right? <laughs> and those who love it will eat its fruit. Okay, what are the consequences that I love? What are the consequences that I want? Now, I didn't read that verse intentionally, you know, in the beginning, right? Because we need to, you know, I'm sure that you've learned a lot about faith, about confession of faith. Uh, but the thing is this, that it's, it's when, you, when we say faith itself, like the principle of faith, uh, you, you're talking about relationship with God. Okay, never forget that. You're talking about walking with God. You're talking about esteeming God. We're talking about valuing his word, right? And we're talking about intimacy. Okay. Now, that is what when we, mean, when we say when, uh, about faith. Okay, so this confession comes from that place of faith. Okay, so uh, we'll stop here. I know we're taking time going through this, but uh, yeah, so we'll stop here and hopefully, you know, it will change the way we think about God, uh, about his success that he intends for us and his plans and purposes, right? Okay. So, okay. So you have a great week, a uh, great weekend. God bless you. We'll meet again. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Right. See you. Bye-bye.